Good morning, everybody. Good to have you with us. Glad, glad that you're here. Uh, man, summer's here. It's hot outside. Feels good in here, though. Welcome to everybody that's online today. We're glad to have you. Uh, wherever you're watching from, maybe you're in a different country, a different state. Maybe it's cold where you are. Uh, we're glad to have you with us. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> Please let us know if there's anything we can do uh, to help you along in your journey. Comment. Let us know about prayer, prayer needs that you have. Our team would love to help you along the way. And they'll be posting there in the feed a link that you can give. You can give online uh, today. So thank you all so much. Everybody in the house today, thank you all for being here in person. Uh, you're looking good. Honored, honored, honored to be here with you today. Um, I'm excited about this summer. We have several things kicking off. Uh, we had our classes already kicking off and uh, been going really, really well. And uh, it's not too late to join. Some of the class, a couple of the classes are our series uh, that, that would be a little tough to catch up. But the Monday class um, is one that you can jump in on. Um, this week, our Tuesday class is not meeting uh, because I'm going on a road trip, <laughs> and I'm the teacher, so a literal road trip. Uh, uh, but uh, the uh, Thursday class, I, I want to encourage everybody to hop in that one as well, if you want to. Anyway, uh, July 18th, we have a special guest music group called Chosen Road, uh, who do bluegrass gospel music. And I don't, it's been a long time since we had some good old southern music up here, but it's going to be good. Uh, and then river baptisms are back. We're going to be going down the river on August the 8th and uh, having our worship service at the river. And uh, we've been doing this for several years. We had to take a break last year, but uh, we're going back to the river down City Park where the big plaza is. And uh, we every year we do this, um, we baptize 70, 80 people. Uh, so one year we did 90 some odd people. So um, if you know people that want to get baptized or maybe you've never been baptized, we'd love for you to make plans to be with us that day, August the 8th. I believe we'll have just one service that day at 10 o'clock, uh, 10 o'clock at the river. All right. So uh, when you go on a road trip, there's several things you have to take with you, right? We talked the first week about it. You need a playlist. You yeah, know, playlist is good. Uh, it, it sets the tone and all that. But you better make sure you have clothes, right? You better pack some clothes. Uh, you better make sure you, ha you have some money to buy gas and snacks and hotel and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but maybe the most important, I don't know, if you don't have clothes, that's pretty tough. Uh, <laughs> but if you don't have navigation, if you don't have navigation, it's going to be a really, really tough time. And uh, I uh, grew up in the era of having one of these. And uh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Wow. Clapping for the atlas. All right. This is a Texas atlas. Look how thick the Texas atlas is. Come on. So all these detailed streets and color-coded. And, man, I, I don't know what it is about a map like this. I'm, I'm a very much of a map nerd, but I love to just, sometimes I'm just at the house, and I'm just like, man, Odessa, Okay. They got loop 338, all right. I just, there's something about maps that excite me, and I love planning trips out, and like, okay, I'm going to stop there, and this. And uh, so maps are important, but having somebody that knows how to read the map is equally as important, right? And my, we've learned in our marriage, my wife is not that person. <laughs> She's like, she can't even figure out the Google map, you know, that's like turn left and all that. It's still, it's still a struggle for her. So having a map's important. Having somebody that knows how to read the map's important. Um, I remember when I was in high school, my sister and I and a couple of friends went to Dallas to, for the weekend to, uh, to be with some friends up there. And uh, back in that day, uh, the, the coolest thing to do when you were in a big city was to go to the Hard Rock Cafe in that town and buy the shirt. Everybody had like Hard Rock Cafe Dallas and Houston and Las Vegas. Y'all remember that? Um, and uh, so we wanted to go downtown Dallas to the Hard Rock Cafe to get the T-shirt and, 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 to, and to eat the expensive food and all that. And um, we, 
we were starting off uh, on the Fort Worth side of the Metroplex and we had to go into downtown Dallas and we didn't know anything about the roads there. Uh, we grew up in Buda, okay, so <laughs> there's a loop four there that's very loosely a loop. Anyway, um, so, so, so my, my friend's dad drew a map for us on a piece of paper and said, you know, this is the road you take and then you get off this exit and watch for this and that. And he had it all drawn out on a piece of paper. All right, so it made sense. We start going on the main road and we get into the, the city of Dallas, downtown, and we get completely lost. And there's so many, you know, downtown, any big city, it's all one way streets. And uh, we were young, we didn't know how to navigate. We didn't have a lot of experience in it. So, man, we got so lost, and we started arguing with each other, and we started fighting about it, and we got so mad. Everybody was fighting with each other. My poor sister was the one that was having to drive. Um, I don't even know if the rest of us had our license, but, um, and so we're, all right, no, turn that way, no, turn this way. And we could, we, at one point, we could see Hard Rock Cafe, but we couldn't get to it because there was roads that were closed, and it just, it was an absolute disaster. You know, and um, uh, if you don't have a knowledge of where you are and where you're going, you don't have a map to get there, and then someone who knows how to navigate the map, it's so tough. And there was this idea that men don't like to ask for directions, and I don't know how accurate that is in 2021. Uh, is that still true? Is that still a thing? Uh, I remember when one, one road trip when I went to was in Mexico. Uh, when I was in college, I lived in Mexico one summer and we would take weekend trips, road trips out uh, to different places. And uh, one time we went to this volcano out in the middle of nowhere. We had to go through all these little villages to get there. And uh, the person we were driving with, we we're in a big van. And uh, it, it was like a good times van. Y'all remember those like with carpet on the ceiling and all that kind of stuff? And so we were going through Mexico in this van, and he would go, come through this village. We go through a village, and, and in Mexico that day and time, there's there just people everywhere, uh, all, all over the streets and all the corners and everything. And every single corner, he would say, uh, to, the, to the volcano this way? You know, he would ask, a, a volcano or whatever. And, and they say, yeah, izquierda, derecho, derecha, you know, <laughs> telling us all these different directions to go. <laughs> We get to the next corner. Sometimes they would give us different directions, you know, at the next corner. And that's why he said we're going to ask at every corner because they're going to change a little bit at every corner. And we'll get to where we want to go if we just keep asking where we're going. It's pretty wise, pretty smart. So a few years ago, they invented the GPS that you could put in your vehicle not associated with your phone, but you know, it, you mounted it up on your dash. Y'all remember that? And uh, I, I remember the very first time we got it, we were so excited, man, we were so high tech. Uh, we had the kids in the minivan, we were going to go to Tennessee to visit my, my family and we got there, you know, it was great, we got there. But then on the way home, we're about to leave out of uh, Spring Hill, Tennessee to come back to, to San Marcos we entered in the address, and um, it said, okay, you, it's 15 hours or whatever in 30 minutes. Okay, let's go. We're so excited. And, and, and if you ever got off course, it would always say recalculating, you know, recalculating. First five minutes, it, it kept doing that over and over again. And, uh, and then it started, we started getting on the path that it wanted us to go on. And um, we kept thinking, you know, this is not the path that we got here on. And we kept thinking, like, this doesn't, just, this doesn't feel right. And the roads kept getting smaller and smaller. And then it went from paved to gravel. And then it went, literally this last road that we got on was a tiny little road that was not paved. And there was puddles and creeks that we were going across. There was chickens and ducks. In the, in the road and all this kind of stuff. We're like, this is not working. The technology is not working. And so we had to 
call my sister, backtrack a little bit, okay, and she would begin to tell us how to get through this path. So if, if we're talking about a road trip and we're talking about how important it is to have navigation and knowing where you are and where you're going, uh, that's, that's important. But it's a completely different set of consequences if we're talking about having no directions or wrong directions for your life. For your life. That's what we're talking about today. Where, where are you going? Do you know where you're going? Do you know the path that you're taking? Is it the right path that you're taking? There's so many people in life that want to just wing it, you know. I'll just get there, you know. We'll just figure this out on the way. We'll just, we'll just kind of go with the flow. Instead of a well-documented route that's been proven, we often want to chart our own course. And I don't know if you've realized this. I'm sure you have. There's a lot of people in 2021 that are off the right course. They're wandering around, and probably the most troubling thing about that is that they don't even know that they're on the wrong course. They think they're on the right course. Why? Because there's so many other people going in the same direction. The voices that they hear have pulled them off the right course onto an alternate route, a detour, and, it, and, and they've just kind of like, well, everybody else is going this way. It must be the right way. And they've heard a lot of voices saying the same thing, repeating the same thing over and over and over, thinking, well, if it keeps being said, it must be right. Or if it's said loudly, a lot must be right because it's said loudly. I'm glad you came today to, to be sobered up a little bit or maybe encouraged a little bit that sometimes the right way is not the way that's being yelled about. Sometimes the right way is the way that's not the most comfortable. You know, you, you might have heard people say, well, this feels right. This feels good. Or do what you feel right about. Sometimes the right way is the, right, is the way that doesn't feel the best. Sometimes the hard way is the right way. And if all we're doing is listening to the voices around us, uh, trying to point us in the direction that they think we should go, that's going to be a problem. Everybody's got an opinion, right? I have an experiment I want us to do right now. At the count of three, I want everybody to participate in this. You don't have to say anything. All you have to do is point, okay? And I want us to point to north at the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Point to the north. <laughs> Literally, you're all pointing in every direction except for, I don't see anybody pointing that way. You did? Who all pointed that way? Okay, you're wrong, because that's not north. <laughs> Who pointed that way? You're wrong. That's not north either. What about that way? Guess what? We don't have to guess about where north is. You know why? Because right here in my pocket, I have a compass. This compass is going to point to north all day long. And I never have to guess because north never changes. Does it? Well, I think north's that way. Well, I think it's over there. Well, it doesn't matter what you think. It only matters what the truth is. Where is north? Drum roll. North is right there. About that fourth light on the blue light right there. Okay, don't be cheating and come to the next service. <laughs> oh, it's right over there. Okay, whatever. But that kind of does prove my point in another way. When you've been told where it is, why not just stick with it, right? Even when other people are trying to tell you other things, no, I know where it is. Now, just like this compass is always telling me where north is and that never changes, 
the Bible, come on. There's another atlas right here. <laughs> this tells us where to go in life and the word of God never changes. I wanna to read to you a verse, uh, Matthew 7, 13. <clears throat> Matthew 7, 13, this is one of the most important verses in the Bible. This is a, a, a verse you should write down, you should memorize it, you should think about it, meditate on it, study it. Matthew 7, 13, 14, these are the words of Jesus in his most famous sermon of all time, the Sermon on the Mount. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is what? It's broad. And, the, and this gate is wide for many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult. And only a few ever find it. Okay, so it never, ever changes. So there's two pieces to this compass. One is the little needle, which you could see it, but those red, there's a red side and a black side to this needle. And it's moving, you know, actually it's not moving, it's steady. And as I move this compass around, it's the red part always points north. So if I'm, if I'm wanting to go in a certain direction, then I don't try to change that needle to go in the direction I want it to go in. Instead, the proper thing to do is for me to adjust my life to what the needle tells me to do. It says to go this way. Now, I, I can try to be like, no, <laughs> you go, go the other way. It's not going to change. So I adjust my life to the direction it wants me to go. That's so important. And that's what this is saying here in Matthew 7, 13, 14, that there is a narrow gate. There's a, there's a way to go. There's a way to go, and it is narrow, and it is straight. There's another way you can go, and it leads to hell, and it's wide, and it's easy to take that path. And there's so many people that are taking that path that's very wide, it's very easy, and that's what I was talking about earlier. It feels like it could be the right way because it's constantly in your face, and it constantly makes sense or it may provide immediate emotional support, or it may feel better in the short term. But if you're trying to get into the kingdom of God, if you're trying to have relationship with God, and that's really our destination, relationship with God, and that destination doesn't happen after you die, the good news of Jesus Christ is that that can begin today. So it's a narrow gate, it's a narrow way. Okay, so the destination is eternal relationship with God. That doesn't change. All right, check. Got that. You have to go through a gate. That gate is narrow. That doesn't change. All right, got it. It's easy to get to hell. The opposite of a relationship that's eternal with Jesus Christ is to be separated from Jesus. Not just now, but forever and ever. Hell, it's easy to take that path. All right, check, got it. So how do, we, how do we know the way? How do we know what that path is that's so narrow, that is difficult? If you find, how do we get on the path to eternal life? How do we know the way? Well, um, it's a beautiful story in the Bible where the disciples were having this conversation with Jesus in John the 14th chapter. Now I wanna encourage you, this is, this is an extra Bible study for you this week. You wanna get into this, you really wanna know the way, study John 14, okay? It's an incredible, incredible chapter. 
Jesus is expounding. Jesus is teaching his disciples, and he's talking to them about this way. And Thomas, and, and Jesus says, well, and you're going to know the way to go. And Thomas just goes, uh, uh, Jesus, no, we don't know the way. He's just honest with Jesus. No, how do we know where the way is? How do we know where to go? And this beautiful text, John 14, 6, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you'd have known who my Father is. So from now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. What is the narrow path? What is the way to eternal life? What is the way to relationship with God forever and ever and ever? Jesus is the way. Jesus is always in this one direction. And I want to find that way. I want to find Jesus. And when I find the way... It changes everything. Now, this is such an interesting principle, right? I mean, like if we, what we want is a prescription of this is the way. Okay, on Monday, you're going to do this. And then on Tuesday, you're going to do this. And Thursday, and da, da, da. And we want this outline of the way. Tell me what the way is. I want to know what the way is. What job should I take? And what, uh, you know, who should I marry? And should I have more kids? Or You know, when should I retire? Where should I live? I want to know what to do in life. I want to know, I want to know these details about life. And that's what Thomas is trying to get across to Jesus. Like, we want to know what to do. We we want to do the right thing. We want to know what to do. And Jesus' answer, you know, at face value is sort of difficult to understand. I am the way. No, no, Jesus. That's not what we're talking about. We know you're important. We know you're the Savior. But we're trying to figure out what to do. I'm the way. Okay. Have y'all ever wrestled with this too? Like, no, Jesus, we want to try to figure out how we're trying to make it through life. What do we do with life? How do we go to heaven? Jesus' answer is still the same. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So this is our goal. We're going to surrender to the word of Jesus. The word of Jesus is, I am the way. Okay. I want to, I want to receive that. I want to believe that. I want to have faith in that, that Jesus is the way. And so this is what I'm going to do. My goal is going to be to attach myself to Jesus. If Jesus is the way, then what I want to do is I want to attach myself to him. Now, this is, seems very elementary, very simple, and it is. But there's so many people that are trying to, let's just say that this is the way of the world. And this is the way of God. There's so many people that have this book open and they have this book open and they're like, okay, I'm going to go this way. Okay, and then, oh, then I got to do my Bible reading and then I'm going to watch the TV and then I'm going to get to do this and then I'm going to find out what this star is talking about, this athlete, I'm gonna, like, what are they tweeting about and what are they saying and I want to follow them and then I'm going to follow, right? Like you're trying to do both. And what Jesus says is, no, I am the way. Attach yourself to me. Attach yourself to me, and let's see what will happen. So if we want to get to this eternal destination of relationship with Jesus forever and ever and ever, we have to attach ourselves to him, to Jesus. And we have to die out to ourself and surrender ourself to him. And say, Jesus, I don't know exactly what's happening. I don't know how to live this life. I want to 
learn from you. I want you to teach me. I want you to help me. And, and I want you to reshape me. I want you to change me. And every human being in this room right here, including me and everybody watching online right now, has been born with tendencies to go against God. Every one of us have things in us that want to rebel against God's way, Jesus. And so every single one of us have to die out to him in order to receive him into our life. That's that narrow way. The, the broader way is the easier path, which is just to go with your natural inclinations, right? The natural inclination is, I'm just gonna go wherever the heck I wanna go, you know? Because that's what's easy and that's what everybody else is doing and that's what feels right, that's what feels easy, that's what feels natural. We're naturally born in a sinful state. David said, we're all born in sin and shapen in iniquity. It's just a tough part of life. So every one of us, me included, have to die out to that sinful nature that wants to rebel against the way, against Jesus, and surrender our heart to him. Now that's our part. Surrendering to, to God is on us, giving up mentally, giving up control, um, letting go of the way others are talking about us and taking us and influencing us. And, you know, sometimes we older folks can be very critical of young folks, teenagers, um, younger kids, uh, because they're so wrapped up in the way uh, their peers are taking them and they're so influenced by the peer pressure around them. But, but as we get older, it's really not a whole lot different. We're constantly thinking about what other people think about us. We're constantly doing things to manipulate their emotions toward us and to make them like us and to fit in and to, to do things that may feel right at the time. And so, uh, so we all have to do that. We all have to let go and literally stop and turn from the ways that we're going. That's called repentance. We're gonna repent. We've, we've been going this direction and it feels right and it feels good, but that's not the way to eternal life. So I'm gonna attach myself to Jesus. I'm gonna turn from the old way and forget about it, not return to it, but reject it and go towards Jesus. Go towards the one who died for me, Jesus. Are y'all awake this morning? Amen. That's on me, turning and approaching Jesus is on us. That's our, that's our role in this. And really, if you just wanna put it in a term, it's dying. We die. It's a choice that we have, it's a free will choice that we have to surrender. But after we die, there's this gorgeous thing that happens where Jesus doesn't leave us there dead. But Jesus begins to do a supernatural work in us. And we know what that work is because of this Bible. So there's a two-part thing that happens here. One is we begin to educate ourselves on who the way is, Jesus. We read the word, we begin to learn who God is. That's so important. I wanna encourage you to get in the word and read the word, learn who he is. That's so important, that's on us too. To hear him, to hear his word, to have his word breathe life into us. But there's something else that happens. There in John 14, uh, later on in the chapter, he says, I'm not gonna leave you alone, but I'm gonna send a comforter, another advocate. And he's going to be with you always, and he's going to help you. So he's going to reconfigure. He's going to reshape the insides of you and so that you will have different inclinations to be converted and to live a holy life to line up with the word and the way is not gonna happen because you just like, I'm gonna do it. 
I'm going to live right. You know, brute force, just like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to discipline myself and I'm going to wake up early and I'm going to, you know. There's nothing wrong with having a mind that's in the right direction, but you're not going to do it by yourself. The Holy Spirit of God is the only thing that can come in to our heart and what the Bible would say, sanctify us. Make us different people. People that used to be bitter to be nice and friendly. People that used to be angry and mean and hard-hearted. To have a soft heart. To ask for forgiveness and to ask for people's a second chance. I mean, it's someone that has, that has been one way, one identity. Are y'all awake? I'm going to keep asking y'all this. The more I see people drifted off. All right. Someone that is inclined to go one direction without the power of the Holy Spirit in their life. I'm, I'm giving you amazing news today that God is going to do the work for you. Do the work for you. But it can't happen if we ourselves try to do it, try to force it, try to make it. It's not, that is a life of complete torture. Try to fit into some religious system without complete surrender to Jesus. And so the only way that we know the path, the only way that we know is that God gives us his word so that we would know him, so that we would know the way. He gives us the word. Hebrews 4 and 12 through 13 says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit. So the word of God begins to do surgery in your life. As you read the word of God, it begins to cut away the old nature. It's a, it gives us an analogy here between joint and marrow. Okay, so that's a, that's a, that's a metaphor to show you that there's two sides of your life. There's a carnal side, a sinful nature, the flesh, the, the nature, the inclinations in you that have just been going away from God. That's in there. There's a hardness in your heart. That's in there. And so when we read the word, it begins to do surgery on our heart, cutting away the, the hard parts and revealing the marrow, which is the soft, spiritual sweet nature that God created you with before the foundations of the earth. But sin has contaminated that and stolen it away from you. And so we need the word of God to come and make us new again. Take us back to the original nature that God originally intended. Amen. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God, everything is naked and exposed before his eyes and he is the one to whom we are accountable. So there's basically, I think three people, three types of people here today. There's people are on the path. You're following Jesus. You're attached yourself to Jesus and you have been seeing so many things in front of you that are yelling at you and wooing you away from the path, from the word. I'm glad you came today to have that confidence. No, 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 you, you're, you're all right. You're going the right path, keep going. There's other people that are wandering a little bit off the path. You may have, been, you, you may have fell into that, you know, idea that man, well, have, have things changed? You know, is it is this right now and is this wrong now? And is this, you know, like what, how? I'm glad you came today. The way never changes. The word of God is true forever. 
And there could be people here today that are just completely lost. You know, that's a term that we've used in the church for many, many decades, the lost. We use that term because they're off the path. They're out of the way. They're not attached to Jesus. They are on their own and lost and quite possibly didn't know it. So if you happen to be in here today, and I've said some things today that have, uh, you know, alerted you or I feel like a lighthouse that's spinning around up here today. Come on home. Come on back. This is safety over here. This is the way you should go. Come on back. You've made it into the harbor. This is the path you should go. You're about to hit uh, home. You're about to dock up. Come on. Come on back. Come on back home. Would you stand to your feet right now? I want us to pray together. And then we're going to sing. So no matter where you are on that spectrum of folks, really the direction is the same. The direction is Jesus. Let's love on Jesus for a minute. Would you join with me? Just say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I want to be with you. Jesus, I don't want to walk a day without you. Jesus, I want to attach myself to you. I'm not worthy to do that. I, I have done so many things that are not like you. And, and honestly, Jesus, I don't really understand the path I'm supposed to take. Let's just be honest with him right now. If you're in one of those places where you just don't feel it, God can take your honesty. Lord, I'm not aware of what's going on. I need help with what's going on. God, help me. Help me, Lord Jesus. Let's be honest. We all need forgiveness for things in our life that we've gone through. So why don't we repent before him right now? Just say, Lord, I repent of my sin before you. Please forgive me of the things I've done in my life that are not of you. I don't want to live a life of rebellion or live a life trying to create a new north, a new east, a new west. Instead, instead, Lord, I want you to show me. I want to be with you. Come on, let's just be honest with him. I want to be with you. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for giving me a new beginning and a fresh start on this journey called life. I'm excited about what the future brings. Lord, reshape me. If you know there's things in your life that you don't like, that are hard and difficult, maybe, you, maybe you're bent towards anger, you're bent towards being selfish, you're bent towards other immoral things that you know are not right. If you just have those leanings or whatever, Lord, reshape me in a way that only you can do. Lord, I would never expect to be able to do that by myself. I don't think a, reading a book or going to a class is going to do that. Lord, only the power of your Holy Spirit. And I'm completely clay in your hands, Lord. Reshape me and mold me to however you want me to be, God. Whatever that is that you would reshape my life to look like. God, I trust you. The hands of the master, the hands of the potter. Lord, you can shape me and mold me into whatever you want me to be. Transform me by the renewing of my mind, God. Reshape my thinking and my ability to reason and to progress uh, throughout this thing called life. God, I, I'm praying, Lord, your Holy Spirit. Why don't we all just say, Lord, I'm open to your presence right now. I'm open to your spirit. Holy Spirit, fill me today, I pray. In Jesus' name. Come on, everybody say amen. 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 me with this. 
Cloud, a shout of praise this morning. How hey, you guys? Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, we know you could be anywhere, anywhere, especially at 8:30. You could be in bed, but you came here to worship with us, and we're just so thankful for that. We pray you guys have an awesome day. Um, get some rest, spend time with your family, and just have a great day. We'll see y'all next time.